the alternate alternator alternative. I catch a lot of slack because I don't play games with people. I just don't. I call things how I see them. And if I see bullshit, I will call bullshit. I'm not going to play games with anybody. And, and that's, that is going to be ever apparent as time goes by. And I wanted to have a little talk about... I, I, I had a little discussion last night during the beginning of the show. I'm going to include like four and a half or so minute clip after I'm done speaking from last night's show. But I wanted to explain something. A little bit of a difference that maybe I had and that other people didn't. So, I'm going to have to use the car as an example here because we're going to talk about alternators. So, there's probably a fair amount of individuals out there that have learned as much as how to replace an alternator on a car if it fails, okay? I know not everybody knows this stuff, but there are, you know, a fair amount of people that have at least learned that much about repairing their own car. Not really hard in most cases. In most cases, and yes, I'm going back to older vehicles. I know the new ones can be a nightmare, but in the older vehicles, you typically had two bolts you had to loosen. Uh, one of them was a 9 16 and the other one was a half inch on a, on a Ford anyway. I mostly drove Fords. And then you have a connector, of course, and then you just, you know, put your new alternator on, tighten your belt, tension your belt, plug the, plug the wire back in, you're good to go, right? No sweat, no problem. At that particular time, I think you could get a, a, a new alternator or remanufactured alternator, that is, for usually around 30 something dollars, if I recall correctly. Wasn't too awful bad. However, my dad went a step further than that, and that is what I am trying to encourage other people to do. My dad didn't just teach me how to replace that alternator. My dad taught me how to diagnose what was wrong with the alternator and how to go and buy the part that the alternator needed. Whether that be brushes, whether that be a new diode trio, my dad taught me how to repair what I had, and he also taught me that in many cases you are better off repairing what you have than replacing it, because then you at least know what you got. And for instance, like, let's take the reman alternators just as an example. You know, when you get that reman alternator from whoever, whatever company did it, uh, there's a good chance that there are some of the parts inside, of course, it wouldn't be replaced. That would kind of negate the whole purpose of the reman, right? So your windings probably aren't going to be new. And, uh, of course, the housing's not going to be new. And bearings may or may not be new. But even if the bearings are new, let's say that you had a good quality alternator, okay? And you went and bought a replacement alternator from the auto parts store. That was a reman unit. That reman unit might have cheaper bearings in it. I'm just giving an example. It might have quite a bit cheaper bearings in it than what you originally had. So you swap out your alternator and, you know, a year, year and a half down the road, your bearings start to squeal. I'm just giving you an example. To whereas, if you would have taken that alternator and replaced the brushes or the diode trio or what have you that went wrong in that alternator, not only do you have a working unit, but you have a unit that was built with the better bearings and, and the other parts that may be better than what it is if you bought that, that cheap reman from the auto parts store. Am I making any sense here? That's why it is important. That's why it is imperative. That not that you just know how to repair your gear, but to go that step further and know how to repair the individual components of your gear. And I cannot say this enough. I know that I catch a lot of slack because of my attitude. But you know what? I wasn't babied. I, I mean, I was by my mom, but I wasn't babied by my dad for sure. And my dad taught me real quick that either you learn how to do it or you go without. 
Well, the thing of it is, is when the big SHTF happens, when things really, truly go sideways, every single one of us are going to be in that position. So would you rather not have any clue of what it is you need to do? Or whether would you rather know how to take care of your gear, know how to fix your problems? I can't stress this enough. And just like I said in the little clip that I'll add, I can't stress this enough. You know, this whole run and gun business, all this nonsense that you're going to be in a firefight every single day for the rest of SHTF. That's not realistic. What is realistic is you're going to have a bunch of gear that fails on you. And I would highly recommend that you know how to actually repair the gear. You know, Pinball Preparedness made a video this morning. I had to laugh. Because I guess he had a power outage overnight. And he's patting himself on the back. He's so proud. Because he didn't have to worry about his food getting spoiled and all that. You know, because he had a bunch of people send him free shit. That he probably couldn't hook up himself. He probably paid somebody to come in and hook it up to his home. Because, why? Well, he don't. He, he's too good for that. He don't need to learn how to do this stuff. He's too good for that. And if something fails, well, we'll just blame it on the liberals, right? It was the liberals. That's, that's what did it, the liberals. People like that are going to fail in short order. And I can tell you a million times, don't be like that. But you have to accept that advice. And you also have to accept that I'm not going to sit there and sugarcoat everything. I'm not here to try to make friends. I'm not here to try to build a big channel. I'm not here to try to figure out a way to profit off of you. I'm here actually to help. Sometimes that help it doesn't come from the nicest of people. I mean, my goodness. My goodness. If you think I'm bad, uh, you clearly haven't met my father. If you think I'm bad, you have no idea. No idea. And any animosity that I have, or whatever you want to call it, on the subject, is because I've been doing this for a long time. Not just YouTube, but trying to talk sense into people. People would rather blow the littlest things way out of proportion so they got something to keep themselves busy, or at least they think they do than what they would actually throwing in and, and doing the work, putting in the effort to do something worthwhile. Don't be like that. Unless you know somebody that's going to save your ass, don't be like that. I don't know anybody that's going to save my ass. And, and largely because I'm probably going to be the guy saving their ass. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I am glad if I'm in a position to be able to help people like that. But that's kind of the whole point. Because the more people that I can help in the ways that I know, the more people that hopefully will help me in the ways that I don't. Because there are certainly a lot of things I don't know a whole lot about. Absolutely. And I do invest time into learning those things. But I also invest the most amount of time in doing the things that I know I'm already good at. I know I'm already inclined to be able to do. Because it only makes sense. And they're tangible skills. I mean, think about it. How many people are going to need stuff fixed after things go sideways? That is what I excel in. I've been thinking about this stuff for a long time, folks. I was at least uh, on some level into preparedness after the movie The Day After came out. Because that scared the holy crap out of me. And so ever since that moment, I have set my mind that I'm going to learn how to do as much as I can. I'm going to try to learn as many skills that I can that, that would go around being able to keep things going, to keep things working. Because, you know, you can go back to trying to 
carved stone with rocks and all that stuff if you want. But um, there's been a whole hell of a lot of technology ever since that point in time. And if we can use some of it, we should probably use some of it. Look, if you're interested into preparedness, if you're already into preparedness, you have to understand it's going to take work. It's going to take work. And you're much better off putting a bunch of work in now so that you can learn this stuff instead of taking the crash course after things start falling apart. I don't know. I don't know. But I wanted to mention that about the alternator because there's there's a good lesson to be learned in that. I, um, I also want to uh, play this little video clip from last night, which I've already spoke here longer than what that clip is. So, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I hope you have a good day. Hope to see you tonight on the live show. Shalom. Because many of the preppers do not want to have to put any actual mental work into stuff. Sure, they'll, they'll stack and pack, man. They'll stack food to the rafters. They'll you know, do this, there are other things. Some of them might even go pay for a course here or there, right? Learn how to patch people up or what have you. But they won't sit down and figure out how to fix something. And, that, and, and I'm going beyond just how to fix, how to replace a part. No, I'm talking about how to fix that part that you would other, uh, otherwise replace. Right, and I actually, um, in the community thing, I actually made a post to Jay Dudley, and hey, I don't want to be an, you know, I'm not an ass towards these guys because I don't like them. I'm an ass towards these guys because they are leading people incorrectly. <laughs> they just keep buying shit, just just keep stack it, just keep stacking it, right? None of them are saying, hey, man. Maybe we ought to buckle down and learn something. I mean, something tangible. Hey, it's great if you know how to how to perform next demolitization for corn to make sure that, you know, you don't destroy, you know, remove all the vitamins from your own body while you're trying to fill your body with vitamins, right? That's all great. But next demolitization only covers corn. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't cover the equipment to plant, harvest, or process that corn, right? So it doesn't even cover how to make sure that that burner still operates if you still got propane or something, you know? I mean, this is the stuff I'm talking about. And it takes a lot more depth. It takes a lot more work, a lot more effort to learn this stuff. So I'm not an ass to these guys just because I want to be an ass or... or it's not an ego trip that I can be an ass because I know it and they don't. But I am one of those people that I am convinced that at some level, it's best to throw the kid in the water and tell him to learn how to swim. That's not always the best place or always the best method to teach somebody, but it is more often than not. And I'm not saying it's a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. But there's a whole lot of people out there in, in the prepper sphere, if you will, that have no motivation to actually learn useful skills. You can only go around shooting people for so long. And they all want to talk about being able to shoot. They all want to talk about being able to ruck. They all want... That stuff's going to be short-lived. Much shorter-lived than they have any idea. But that's where they put the majority of their effort. Why? Because it looks cool to their buddies. You know what doesn't look cool to your buddies? Not knowing how to fix your gear and starving to death or what have you because you don't know how to fix your gear. That doesn't look cool to your buddies. But you probably won't, they probably won't understand that until they get into that position and then they're cussing me because I was trying to get them motivated to learn something. I don't know. <laughs> right, exactly. Friday. When the oil dries up, so does this farm. But it didn't need to. 
because there's wood gasification and that's just it there's wood gas there's you know I had heard something a long time ago that most all of us have heard <laughs> but I took it to heart when I heard it and that's where there's a will there's a way